My name is Adad Hanna, and uh, I'm an artist currently living in Burnaby, BC. And uh, my work is mostly focused around uh, photography and video. Probably the majority of my projects are commissions. So a museum or gallery or an institution will ask me to produce a project. And that often happens on site and with a group of, uh, of kind of community participants. Um, the project that I'm showing at the, at the Kelowna Art Gallery is a uh, is different from that in many respects because um, nobody commissioned it. It didn't have any uh, uh, place it was being made for. And uh, the project kind of organically started and then kind of turned into this bigger and bigger project. Uh, so while, while most of my projects are done on location and in these kind of uh, very compressed timeframes, this, this project, um, was about a year, took about a year to make all together and really started quite organically with just, uh, you know, I was at home and uh, like everybody else and wondering what to, what to do. And uh, finally put my camera on my shoulder on I think March 14th and headed out and uh, asked people from a distance like, hey, can I take your portrait? And uh, we had kind of a warm spell here then. And uh, I just walked around and um, and got some people to pose for me, recorded them standing still for 30 seconds, and then did short interviews with them. Um, so posing, posing people standing still is something I've done for a long time in a kind of tableau vivant uh, method. Um, but this was new for me in terms of approaching strangers. Uh, and also the poses were quite short. So at 30 seconds, they were quite short. Uh, and then the personal interviews is something I've, I've never done before. So for the last 20 years, I've been shooting video recorded tableau vivant. So I, uh, I'll set up a scene often or find somebody in a particular place and I will uh, put the camera on a tripod, lock it down and say, don't move for a period of about five to 10 minutes. And uh, I'm recording in video. And then at the end, I will uh, um, take away the sound and clip the beginning and the end. And I'll just have like a, five, six, seven minute clip of um, somebody trying to stay as still as they can. Um, and then as a viewer, you, you see that as kind of in the same way as a photo or a painting, uh, but then you see it moving and you kind of piece it together that's a recording. And so then you kind of get uh, I don't know, implicated in this, in this moment of kind of looking at art. The social distancing portraits really started quite organically. So I, I shot a few of them and then I just kind of kept going. There was, I wasn't traveling for any exhibitions or projects. Uh, I wasn't going out. So I kind of had nothing else to do. So every day or two, I would go out and shoot some more portraits. So I would call out to somebody from across the street, like, hey, could I take your portrait? And, and people were very, uh, I remember kind of being shocked by how open people were. You know, people kind of wanted to talk. They liked to have a little bit of interaction. They liked to tell how they were feeling. Um, and, uh, so, so there was, yeah, there were the interesting kind of personal interactions. And then as they started to kind of be more and more of them, they kind of started to tell a story and kind of tell a narrative through these different points. Uh, and for the, uh, all of them have music with them. And so I, I very quickly at the beginning asked uh, my friend Daniel Ingram to compose some music. And then afterwards, my friend Bridget Deitcher took over the composing duties. And uh, so what you, and, and I started posting them to Instagram. Um, and so that was the kind of original platform for them. Uh, so I would post a video, put up the little interview and send it out into the, into the world. Uh, so it was kind of, um, it was a kind of a light and kind of less friction way of kind of releasing work. And, and, uh, and then it kind of just built up its own, own momentum. And yeah, the project kind of just grew and grew. And then I guess in, uh, well, in June, you had kind of the uh, uh, kind of George Floyd protests, Black Lives Matter. And at that point, I kind of uh, sort of paused the project for a second and kind of thinking about where, where I want the project to go, if it makes sense to keep doing it, what, you know, kind of thinking of myself as a white artist and what's my role, how am I implicated, what can I do? Um, and so in the end, after a while, I figured, okay, well, I'll go out to these protests that, uh, I was going to anyway, and, um, and document those. 
and do some portraits at those events and kind of turn over some of my platform in a way. Um, and so that was kind of a way that I, yeah, dealt, dealt with what do you do? Um, and in doing that, I kind of, I, I kind of went down a few other, I did some of uh, kids that had graduated because it was a very strange year for, you know, for people graduating grade 12. Um, uh, I shot some around the pride, um, festivities as, as much as you call them festivities, because everything was scaled back. Um, and then just, just kept, kept shooting. Uh, and in the end, there's over, over 200 of the portraits. And so together you have, each one is, is very specific and a kind of a portrait of one person in a particular time and place and, and their own personal thoughts. But I think they're, they end up being quite relatable. And so, uh, you know, as a series of kind of data points, we all have had a very personal experience with the pandemic, but there's also all kinds of uh, uh, overlap and kind of a collective experience as well. So I think that the, the project in general kind of uh, makes, makes that clear or, or bring, brings that to life maybe. I try not to think too much about what people will take away from an exhibition because I, I feel like uh, that's not so much my job. Like, uh, I kind of try and make art that creates a situation that somebody could come into and, and uh, experience something, but I, I don't want to direct that experience too much. I mean, I think in these, uh, well, in Tableau Vivant in general, there's an element of like kind of getting stuck, you know, and just not quite knowing what you're looking at and then realizing what you're looking at and then wanting to kind of see it through somehow and then becoming aware of your own body in front of, in front of the videos of people standing still. Uh, I mean, often I say that, that I want people to look at kind of themselves and the world around them differently, maybe after seeing my work. So maybe they won't even remember my work, but they'll kind of think of things, uh, you know, think of time differently, think of their experience with art differently, that kind of thing. Uh, with this work, there's the added um, element of, of kind of, of the, you know, of the pandemic. Um, and so, uh, so this is kind of an interesting time as, as Canada appears to be sort of, uh, um, you know, coming to the end of at least some section of, of the pandemic. Um, and so to have this kind of look, look back at a year as we enter this new year um, is kind of an interesting moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine people will think about their own experiences in the last year and a half. Um, and, and then maybe, you know, start to think about themselves in, in an art gallery, what they're doing, what they're, uh, experiencing. Uh, the gallery itself is, is, you know, kind of dark space with these, with the video suspended. And so uh, I, I like that there'll be kind of a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the video and the, and the viewer.